how are you, you, you stinky, stinky little guy? My name is Kylie, also known as Haunted Hippie, also known as the Unholy Ruler, the Antichrist, etc, etc. That is because here on YouTube, I sort of run my own little cult. And if you would like to join and be one of my little maggots, then all you have to do is click subscribe. You can also click the like button and the notification bell because that gets me in good with the algorithm gods, whom I have sacrificed my soul to, but you can sacrifice your soul to me. The souls kind of run upwards in a bit of a pyramid scheme type fashion. If you're new here, that's a lot to take in. I get it. Welcome back if you're not new. I have not done one of these collection videos in such a long time because typically I do live streams and I just give you guys updates on all my new stuff. But today I am taking you through all of the physical media that I own. Well, not all of it. I also still have a bunch of crap at my parents' house, which would include like my old Disney VHS tapes and stuff like that. So I don't have that here with me, but I don't have a lot of storage, which is a problem that I run into frequently because my collection is constantly outgrowing the space that I have. But as you saw, I did a little bit of rearranging today. And so I'm going to show you sort of my new organization tactics because they're always in flux. Like I should probably shoot these videos maybe like once a year because it always changes how I organize things always changes. I got new shelving. And so I'm going to take you guys through all of that. And I want to show you all my best stuff, all my like collectors edition DVDs and cases and stuff like that. So we will be leaving my typical spot here today because I got to take you over to my shelves. If that sounds like something that you'll enjoy, then grab a drink, grab a snack, stick around and let's get on with the collection. Okay. Hi. Hello. I'm here. I'm talking into my phone because I don't want to lug my whole laptop and mic situation around the room. Hopefully this sounds okay. So I'm starting us on the bottom row because this is where we have like the least amount of cohesion. So I'm kind of going to go through this quickly. I'm just going to pull out what I find interesting. So starting with dead snow, I've actually never seen this, but I got this at a little antique shop recently and I've heard good things like zombie Nazis or something. Cool. It's on the watch list. Up next we have rubber, which is about, yes, believe it or not, a killer tire. I don't know why I hung on to this one. I've never really felt an urge to rewatch it, but it's just something about the novelty of it. It's, it's very weird. This was something that I was actually really pumped about finding and I would have it on a more prominent shelf, but I just don't really know where to put it. But if you don't know about Wes Craven's Cursed, this is, well, the set was probably cursed. It was one of the messiest film productions in all of horror history. Just stopping and starting production, the amount of reshoots, like it's nuts. I had never seen it on physical media before, much less an unrated version. Yes, peep that right there. So I was so psyched to find this. I found this actually at a vintage store in Ventura. More Wes Craven stuff, but he just produced these it's the hills have eyes remakes still haven't watched these because i just don't know if i want to do that to myself oh more Wes craven down here i don't know why i have so much craven down here but red eye is another one of his underrated ones highly recommend it this also seems to be a shelf of remakes i also have prom night from 2008 right next to it we have amityville horror from 2005 now if i can just uh, direct your attention down here i keep a couple of my sleeved dvds down here together because a bunch of them are now up on the wall so these are just like the ones that are left i've actually never seen the grudge too or Dawn of the Dead. I was considering getting rid of these at one point because I really do not like The Grudge. I think it is such a weak movie. So I'm pretty sure nothing in me would be interested with the sequel, but nonetheless, I'm like, well, I'm a collector, aren't I? We got The Strangers Unrated, which I'll be honest, this movie has never really done anything for me, but I want to try it again. I also have The Devil's Rejects, which I also almost got rid of at one point because I thought that I just never wanted to watch anything Rob Zombie again. But I have actually heard good things about this one, and eventually I will cover him as a director on my channel. I'll do a deep dive. So I'm gonna hang on to that one. The Collector I never finished. I want to give it another go. Yeah, and these are just like hella random titles that I have been sent that like I had never heard of before, but they like maintained enough of my interest that I decided to keep them to check them out eventually. These are like some 70s vampire movies, which I think is actually really cool. Two-Headed Shark Attack. I think that's self-explanatory. This one just had like some weird animation kind of vibes going for it. So I don't really know the deal here, but it just kind of looks like my type of aesthetic. So I'm gonna try it out eventually. This is a random zombie movie, unfamiliar. We've also got The Fourth Kind, which I couldn't stand the first time I tried to watch it, but I wanna know what you guys see in it. I wanna try again. We've got a George A. Romero zombie movie here, Land of the Dead, a Bigfoot movie, and this is really just like a hodgepodge. These are all so random. The World's End is not really horror, but it didn't really fit in with my other like action fantasy stuff, my other shelves. So it just lives here now because I still wanted to display it. Decided to keep Bad Milo. I have another edition of Dawn of the Dead, so I don't know which one I want to get rid of because they are actually both the unrated director's cut. I don't even have like the original theatrical cut, I'm pretty sure. So I don't know 
have to do because I like the look of the sleeve DVD, but I prefer the higher quality of the Blu-ray. The Sadness is also one that I'm deciding to keep for now because I just don't know if it's a movie that I can handle. It's supposed to be really gory, really graphic. I think there's some essay in it or something, but I think one day I might be strong enough, so I'm gonna hold on to it for now because I've heard it's a really good movie. Also, I was sent the first two Jeepers Creepers movies. I got these in a box from one of my subscribers like, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago. Feeling conflicted, haven't checked them out yet. Okay, let's move on from these raggedy ass boring shelves. <laughs> now this shelf has some movies in it that I adore. But again, also kind of a hodgepodge because they're just movies that didn't really fit in anywhere else. So maybe I should keep the Amityville movies together. I didn't think about that. Alas, let's get into it. So this is The Stalker. This was a short film that I directed right before I graduated, but this was just a prop because this DVD case was kind of ruined. And so I took out the actual movie cover and then I put this one into it. But if you can see, that is me. That's just little old me there. This was from a scene in the movie where we recreated an 80s slasher kill scene basically, but the real movie inside is a surprise. See, it's actually lights out, but um, yeah, I've just, I've kept this because the actual case kind of got destroyed. So fun little thing that I keep in my collection. Moving on, this is sort of like a purpley blue section in my collection, but it's not very cohesive. And this is upside down. What am I doing? Maybe I should take you in a little bit closer. I know it's a little bit hard to see because of the glare, but I don't really know what to do about that, folks. Dark Shadows, Final Girls, dark comedies that are just fine, but not necessarily favorites. Haunting of Molly Hartley, unintentional dark comedy, just a good 2000s time. The Wailing, I've heard really, really good things about, but I just have not checked it out yet, and this has been in my possession for years now. Amityville 3D, honestly, not that bad. My Bloody Valentine, I adore that movie. April Fool's Day, also good. This is a nice little double feature pack. I think this is like an early 2000s special little collector's edition thing. Also got Gremlins here, an absolute Christmas classic, and then some underrated films here, I think, are Idle Hands and Troll Hunter. I highly recommend both. In this one, Devin Sawa gets a possessed hand. I think Evil Dead 2, they kind of expect expand that one scene with Bruce Campbell into a whole movie and it's wonderful. Troll Hunter is a Norwegian found footage dark comedy about, you guessed it, trolls and hunting them. This was such a happy surprise. A subscriber sent this to me and I was like, literally what the hell is this? And I loved it. I am excited to rewatch it for whenever we do our top 10 found footage live stream together soon. Highly recommend. I think it's free on Tubi as well. Ah, uh, gotta pull this one out. Are you kidding me? A little Halloween Town double feature. You'll know that I have a lot of like nostalgia pieces in my collection. We got Halloween Town and Halloween Town 2 Calabar's Revenge. This was my era, man. I grew up watching this on the Disney Channel. We got the Belco Experiment as well. And then Poltergeist is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I've got the remake for some reason, just haven't been able to part with it yet. I don't really know why because it doesn't really offer me much, but I really, really love Sam Rockwell. So maybe that's why. Of course, we've got Monster House. This is a classic. This is actually an upgrade because somebody sent this to me or yeah did somebody send this to me maybe i got this at a thrift store i honestly can't remember at this point but i had it on dvd and it was kind of a shitty old dvd so upgrade got 28 days later we've got the entire leprechaun seven film collection here i think next year will finally be the year that i do a deep dive to release on saint patrick's day and then here we have a double feature of gremlins and gremlins 2 i don't think that i will part with my dvd because i just like how it looks i'm not a fan of how this blu-ray pack looks this double feature. So I think I do want to keep this one, but I'm going to keep this as well because it has the sequel in it. And then this is a nice little three pack of some iconic movies. So this has When a Stranger Calls, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Vacancy. I Know What You Did Last Summer is one of my favorite movies of the 90s. Adore it. I've not seen Vacancy and the When a Stranger Calls remake is terrible. And I also own that one on DVD because I'm stupid and I forgot it was in this pack. So I bought it twice or no, because this one was sent to me. Was this a horror pack or was this from a subscriber? I'm terrible at remembering. I'm sorry. Finally, Finally, we've got the Mad Magician here. I highly recommend this one if you like Vincent Price. He is doing his regular crazy man thing here. And it's really fun. I think this movie is actually only like 73 minutes or something crazy short like that as well. So highly recommend. I also really like this, this case. It's interesting. It's like see-through, but it's got like a rainbow kind of vibe going on. I don't know. Moving on to this fine shelf here. Now, finally, we are getting into one of my favorite shelves in my collection. This is my TV shelf. It is my Terminator 
Terminator collection shelf. It is my stop motion animation shelf. And then also Oculus is here for whatever reason. Fun fact about this one, which you will see others like this in my collection. You'll notice there's a Blu-ray cover in there, but it's in this like weird DVD packaging. This is actually from a video store when they were going out of business. It's bittersweet, but they were selling a lot of their stuff. And so I got quite a few DVDs that day. Or should I say Blu-rays, but it's in this like weird DVD case. And then in my stop motion collection, Corpse Bride, I have owned this DVD since I was probably about five years old, but it's not worn down like at all. I've been taking good care of my stuff since day one. Then we've also got The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is actually a collector's edition. And we have Coraline, which is also a two disc collector's edition. I'll pull this one out because the artwork is really pretty. This one's just got some cool funky artwork going on. I really like that shift. What is it called? Holographic? If I ever got proper bookshelves one day, like if I move somewhere that has nice shelving, then I would probably have this one facing out and not facing spine out because I think this is just so cute. And then I've got the first three Terminator movies here. I don't think any of them are like special editions though. I don't typically come across red Blu-rays though. I think that's interesting about my copy of Terminator. And then we have some of my favorite shows of all time here. We've got some seasons of The Office. We've got two seasons of Hannibal here. I have the first season of The Twilight Zone, the original show. The first five seasons of American Horror Story, which are the only seasons that matter. I have one season of American Horror Story twice actually, because these are really cool. I'll pull these out. I live very near Los Angeles, and so a lot of these get donated. These are the DVD sets that are sent out for consideration. So basically during award season, these are produced and they're sent out to all the members of the voting bodies. So this one is season three of American Horror Story Coven, which is one of my absolute favorite seasons of the show. It kind of bounces back and forth between this one and Hotel. Santa Clarita Diet has one of these god-awful Goodwill stickers on it. I've been nervous about removing it because they always leave residue or sometimes you dent the case. But a gorgeous little booklet. I love this show. Taken from us way too soon. And then season one of Stranger Things. I think this is just such an iconic show. I have always loved it since day one. And to have the very first season when it was first getting attention, first getting awards and stuff, I think is really special. Hello, it's me again. It's my face. Hi. That was really hard, by the way, with the first two shelves. I was like laying on the floor and like trying to hold up my phone and do... Anyways, this shelf again, not really one of the most important ones, but I'll pull out the good stuff. The only theme with this shelf, as you can probably see, is I tried to keep it to black and white and then black and off-white, black and yellow, whatever you consider this sort of color to be. This is kind of cool. It's a little Blumhouse 8 movie collection. There's Get Out, Split, The Purge, The Purge Anarchy, The Purge Election Year, Unfriended, Ouija Origin of Evil, and The Visit. So quite a nice little collection here, actually. I know you can't see that well, but some of these aren't that important. When a Stranger Calls, Oh My Village of the Damned remake from John Carpenter, the Skeleton Key, Silent Hill, The Quiet Ones. Oh, this is a nice collector's series. Dimension Films did a little collector's series with this one and it's very thick. It almost looks kind of like a VHS. Let's see what's in here. Oh. Ow. Not all that exciting, but it has the early 2000s classic thing of like the little piece of paper with the chapters on it. And then there are multiple discs and some of them have the special features on them, of course, including a documentary of how the movie was made. The Breed Hunting in Connecticut, Fourth Floor, Zodiac, Sixth Sense. Yeah, but that's a good one. Oh, this is a collector's edition? What? I got this at Goodwill, so it's a little bit sticky and there's like this huge dent in the back, but I guess there's a bunch of special features, which makes it uh, a collector's edition. The Uninvited. Maybe I should keep all of the early early 2000s remakes together. American Werewolf in London, we got Dead Silence, The Woman in Black, and Hide and Seek. Not the most specialist shelf, but we still like her. Now this shelf I do like a little bit more. Whoa, howdy doody. So this little section here, this is my Stephen King adaptation section. Pet Cemetery, It from 1990, Secret Window, It and It Chapter Two, The Shining, Doctor Sleep, 1408, Carrie, and Carrie, a three film collection. So this has Carrie, The Rage, Carrie 2, and then also the remake from 2002, which is really, really bad by the way. Angela Bettis does her best as Carrie. I think she is probably the highlight of the movie, but it's so bad, like don't watch that one. 30 Days of Night, kind of an underrated video vampire movie, Cry Wolf, Goofy, early 2000s, love it. Oh, you can't see that one, but that is Pumpkinhead. And then I have two witch movies next to each other because I just simply don't own enough witch movies, and so they're right here. I mean, I have a couple others, but they're on Blu-ray, and so they can't really all go together. But just a couple random favorites because we've got the witch movies. These are two of my favorites. A Quiet Place. Have not seen Stir of Echoes, but I think I might like it. I found this special edition unopened at Goodwill, actually. Same with this Cloverfield. I got this at a Goodwill. 
Goodwill. Then we have Donnie Darko, also Goodwill, and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, which I believe was sent to me. Just gonna pull out a couple of things from this shelf. The Love Witch was sent to me by a subscriber, so it is previously loved, but as you can see, look at the signatures. I believe this was signed by the director and some of the cast, but I could be totally mistaken because I don't know how to read autographs. But yes, pre-loved, so it's a little bit banged up, but we still love her. Oh, these stupid Goodwill stickers. I hate them. I loathe them. They're so hard to get off. I thought that I got them all, but there's a couple in my collection that still have them on. Whatever. So this is unopened, and there is some declassified new footage and special features in this one. This was originally $20 at Best Buy. You can see I got it at Goodwill for four bucks. Nice. I think what's really cool about this one is that if you can see the, the lettering, I don't know if you can, it says TJ Miller's Video Diary. So I think that's a cool bonus feature, probably just more of the footage from the movie that didn't make the cut. I'm a big fan of Cloverfield. I'm excited to rewatch it soon. I think I'm gonna keep saying that the next shelf is one of my favorites over and over because as we move up, I love the shelves even more. And the next one is genuinely like really, really, really special to me. <gasps> no! Hey, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I know the mic on the camera is not great. It's very staticky, so I'm really sorry about that. But I talked about those last shelves for like 15 minutes and I just was not about to record that again. So moving on to a shelf that is 100% one of the most special shelves in my entire collection. I call this my Grandpa Jim shelf. If you're new here and you somehow don't know, my Grandpa Jim passed away a little over a year ago, but he is the man who is responsible basically for my love of cinema. He got me into the horror genre when I was a very small child. Probably a little bit too young, but who cares? I would say that this is part one of his influence on my collection. We'll get into the rest of his influence a little bit later on, but a lot of this shelf contains movies from his own personal collection, the ones that I grew up with him showing me. So let's get into it starting with Tombstone. This is a really cool special edition. I don't think that this one was his. I think I picked this one up on my own, but I love this movie. This is one of the best westerns ever made with Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer. And when you open it up, it's so cool. It says Tombstone and then if you continue to open it up wider, there's just all this amazing artwork from the movie. There's also a ton of special features on this one, like the making of and audio commentary, just a ton of stuff like that. It was one of my grandpa's favorite Westerns of all time and subsequently my favorite Western of all time. We've got three of my top 10 favorite horror movies from the 1950s. We've got House of Wax, Invasion of the Body Snatchers and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Of course, we also have Casablanca, which was one of my grandpa's favorite movies of all time. Just gonna pull a few of these bad boys out because this Casablanca one, one is a two disc special edition. You can tell it's like very early 2000s. Just really gorgeous artwork. I love the classic style of the poster. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask my grandma if she happens to know where she placed the DVD because the movie is missing. But if I ever find it cheap on Blu-ray or something, then I'll just replace it. I'll put it in here. And then House of Wax is one of my special clippy DVDs, which I have a whole other section of my collection dedicated to. I've also got this 20 movie collection from Alfred Hitchcock. Most of the movies in this are from like the 19th 20s and really his lesser known stuff. Two of my favorite Audrey Hepburn movies of all time, Roman Holiday might be my favorite movie of all time period. And then Sabrina is another amazing one. And then I've actually never seen The World in His Arms, but it also stars Gregory Peck. My grandpa loved it, so definitely worth having. I have all of the Indiana Jones movies except for Temple of Doom, but I even have this bonus materials DVD that I found at Goodwill. This bad boy contains over three hours of bonus materials and documentaries. I think it really focuses on George Lucas and Steven Spielberg at the time, which I think is super cool. Surprisingly, my grandpa also loved the Mummy movies with Brendan Fraser, and so I have the first two of those. And then I have this wonderful, wonderful eight pack of the classic Universal Monster movies. One of my subs sent this one to me and it's sleeved, so it is previously loved. It's the Essentials Collection. So we got Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, The Bride of Frankenstein, The Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera, and Creature from the Black Lagoon. It came with this really cool little booklet and I think it just has a bunch of information about the movies inside of it. And the collection itself comes in this almost like lunchbox kind of a thing, but I think it's really cool. And then there are all the movies and they have their own little monster face on them. I love it. Maybe now you can see why that's a very special shelf to me. Okay, moving right along. This time maybe I'll start on this side. So this is kind of just like a hodgepodge. There's no real consistency here. Wait a minute. I think that this one has, I know what you did last summer on it too. Oh no, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> but this has the fog and the howling. So classic John Carpenter. 
Carpenter, and then a classic werewolf movie. Really good double feature pack. Just some bits and bobs of movies that I really like. The Shallows, You're Next, The People Under the Stairs, Underrated Wes Craven, Attack the Block I've heard really good things about. Of course, my Jurassic Park collection. This thing is cool. Let's pull it out. This is just a little booklet. It has the first four movies in it, and two of them also have a 3D option. And this is just one where the artwork is really nice. There's a lot of attention to detail. And then I do my best to keep franchises together. So we have, I believe, the entire Candyman trilogy here. I was sent the sequels from a subscriber, so thank you for that because I am a fan of the first movie and I'd never seen these. And then here are the first four Final Destination movies, which I'm never gonna get rid of these DVDs because they are just so nostalgic to me. I do have all five of them in a Blu-ray pack, so I could save space by getting rid of these, but I'm just not gonna. Especially because the first one is a part of my Clippy collection. These are all my Clippy DVDs. Look at that. It's the nostalgia. Don't you feel it? The collection is growing of these. We've got Valentine, Gothica, Fear.com, Twister, and Final Destination. All right. Are you ready to move on to the top row? One of my favorite rows. I know. They're all my favorite. I'm sorry. <laughs> the theme of this shelf is basically black and red, but mostly black and white. I like to keep a consistent aesthetic if I can. You'll see some other witch movies pop up here like The Craft and The Witch and Hereditary and The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Maybe one day when I have enough of them, I will keep them all together on a single shelf. I definitely do need more witch movies, so I'll try to get on that. But some of my absolute faves, Happy Death Day, which I still haven't opened. I am planning on revisiting this one very soon, though. I need to show it to somebody. Devil, I think, is underrated from Shyamalan. Well, he's a producer, but still. Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, of course. Jennifer's Body, yes, ma'am. Oh, I'll pull this one out because I can't remember what's on it. This is actually a really good pack. I totally forgot that I had the remake of Pet Cemetery. So that's cool. I have the original and the remake. I have A Quiet Place again. I have Crawl. And then that would be Overlord. Not too familiar with that one. Not gonna lie. But this is a cool little beefcake of a Blu-ray. Bloodfest is one of those movies that's so bad that it's good. I do find it to be just slightly underrated, but only just slightly. It's not very good, but like it is. You know what I mean? Then I've got Unopened still, Zombieland, and Zombieland Double Tap. So nice little double feature there. I have not revisited Don't Breathe since it came out in theaters, but I got it on Blu-ray because like it was a decent movie, I remember. Just still have not been able to bring myself to revisit it because of that grotesque plot twist. I will be strong enough soon. Little Fright Night, another copy of Get Out, Us, Keeping Jordan Peele together, Ready or Not, favorite horror movie of all time, The Witch is another absolute favorite. A lot of these are psychological horror also, I've noticed. A lot of these are kind of like my more fucked up movies. So yeah, nice. That is the black and white Blu-ray shelf. This shelf has a really nice mix of everything and again, a ton of my favorites and you'll probably notice that most of these are sleeved. So I tried to keep most of my sleeve Blu-rays all together. Absolute favorites on this shelf, Gretel and Hansel, Malignant. This wrong turn was such a pleasant surprise. Last Night in Soho was my favorite horror movie of 2021. These were pleasant surprises as well. I'm really excited to complete this collection when Maxine comes out. Satanic Panic is one of those stupid, so bad it's good movies. Definitely recommend. Rings is terrible, but I had to complete my The Ring collection which as you can see, I have on Blu-ray over here. And you'll notice I have several other copies of it, but we'll get there in due time, my dear children. Midsommar, another favorite of all time. And then this one is actually my only steelbook. I don't find it to be that magnificent. There's nothing really that special about it. I don't even think that there are special features. And the artwork on the outside is the same as the artwork on the inside. I don't know. It's it's fine. It's cool. I like having a steel book, and I definitely didn't pay full price for this. I can't remember if someone sent this to me or if I thrifted it, but you know, it's all right. I don't know if steel books have totally lived up to the hype, but it is like a really good protective way to store your stuff. Watcher was my favorite horror movie of 2022. It was the only horror movie of the year that I gave a perfect score. These Blu-rays, there's no like cohesion. I could have done like all of the black and red ones and put those here instead. However, these are five of my absolute favorites. I love The Descent, The Ring, The Crazies, The Hunt, and Watcher. They're all definitely up there, probably in my top 100 horror movies of all time. And again, I'm sorry about the glare. So that does it for all the horror Blu-rays. I'm just taking you off the tripod for a second because I keep these near my Blu-ray. These are typically like the horror pack ones, the ones that I need to check out. So sometimes I'll keep my watch list here. Like I'm currently watching the Twilight franchise with someone, so that's living on top of my Blu-ray player for right now. Sometimes that's just a good way to maintain them in my consciousness 
so I don't forget to check them out, but I often do anyways. So over here, I don't think I'm really fully going to take you through all of these movies because none of them are horror. Maybe just a couple down there that are like overflow, but these shelves have not really changed a whole lot since I first organized them a long time ago, and I'm pretty sure I did do a video of that. So I'll just loosely go over like what each shelf is, and you can probably tell anyways, like this is my superhero shelf. We've got comedies up here, here, and here, and then that also kind of extends down here because these are like my favorite children's movies, all the children's movies, Disney movies that I own. So again, like I said, overflow, and then here we've got like dramas, critically acclaimed movies. We've got a whole bunch of Academy screeners here from the 2019 Oscars, and I've definitely showed those off before. This is like young adult dystopia, just a couple of randoms thrown in over there too. And that's kind of continued on this shelf as well. This is sort of a blend of like YA plus superhero stuff. And there's also like my Harry Potter, there's Avatar, Now You See Me, that just kind of random stuff. So let's say we get back to the horror, baby. This one is tough because this shelf is in the corner and I just don't really have a good way to set up my tripod. I tried on my bed though, as you can see. So I'm just gonna hold my camera and this is the best we can do. So here is my VHS collection. It is starting to build out a little bit. Although those three on the right, Evil Dead, E.T. and Stranger Things, none of those are actually VHS tapes. They just have really cool fancy packaging and so I'll definitely pull those out in just a second. But also I had to have the ring on VHS. You noticed I also had it on Blu-ray. But again, that is season one of Stranger Things. I know it says VHS, but you'll see that it's not very quickly. My most recent find was Jurassic Park. I got that one in a vintage store again in Ventura. Up here, this is one of my favorite shelves yet again. There are a couple of my Grandpa Jim's movies in there. For instance, War of the Worlds, When Worlds Collide, it came from outer space. So if you couldn't tell, these are all my alien and space movies. Got John Carpenter's The Thing, Interstellar, Paul. So it's kind of like a genre blend up here. Oh, The Thing from Another World. That is the one John Carpenter remade, actually. I really like how they look up here. I kind of rearranged some stuff. This is actually a film cell from the Harry Potter Studios in London. It's from Order of the Phoenix, which is my favorite movie in that franchise. But yeah, nothing to really pull out here. There are a couple special editions, but nothing crazy. I will, however, be pulling out just a couple of these. This here is the Evil Dead Ultimate Edition. Believe it or not, this only contains the first movie in it, but it has extra discs for all the special features. This edition came out in 2007. I don't think they're still releasing anything like this anymore, and I found this for a really cheap price at just this little vintage shop. I actually found this at the same place that I found Dead Snow, so I bought those together. I adore this. I'm so obsessed with this Ultimate Edition. I was gonna pull out some of the other stuff too, but I realized that E.T. and Stranger Things were not even unwrapped yet. They were still in their plastic. And they're just DVDs. I don't think there's anything crazy inside of them. Should we find out together? Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. Alrighty. Little ASMR for your day. This one is cool because it really does look like a VHS tape. It looks like one of the clamshells, but... Ugh. It's so modern. It even comes with a stupid little like digital thing. It's just a DVD. So there's nothing else in there, but there are a bunch of special features. So that's cool. We got a slider. Ooh, pretty. I love it. Friends don't lie. There's a little like booklet in here. Oh, a poster. Oh, this is very cool. And then, oh, that is so weird. I've never seen a, a little guy like this before. That is an interesting way to open that. Let's see this poster. Oh, I've never seen this one before. Whoa, very cool, very cool. It's the Demigorgon. I'm so glad we opened that together, yay. Now the final bits of my collection I have to show you are above my bed. This is like the creme de la creme. First of all, Although, look at my posters and look at that piece of artwork. That is from Movie Palette, which I have an affiliate code with, by the way. So I got the ring, obviously. And then those posters, the Psycho one was my grandpa's as well. I got the Back to the Future one on my own accord. And the Nambe one I got from his concert back in, ooh, I want to say 2019. So yeah, finally framed them. Looks so profesh. Love it. I know you're probably also interested in like my Texas Chainsaw Massacre poster over there. I've got an Empire Strikes Back poster here that is signed by the leading cast and the director. 
there. But anyways, the DVDs, let's get into it. All right, let's go through all the major franchise movies that I have, starting with two of the big three. So I've got the first four Friday movies in a collection here. Then we jump to part seven, so I'm missing parts five and six. I'm also missing part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan. But then we have Jason Goes to Hell here, Jason X, and of course the remake. So I'm also missing Freddy vs. Jason, unfortunately. And then these are kind of all out of order, but I just prefer the look of the aesthetic going like big to small. I don't like mixing up the Blu-rays and the DVDs. I feel like that looks funky. So maybe you'll also notice that I have the Friday the 13th collection bonus material up at the top here. That also comes along with this little Friday booklet. Just has a bunch of the info about the franchise in there. So I'll do this sort of in order the best that I can because I've got the original Halloween on Blu-ray. Then we jump to Halloween 2018 and then Halloween Kills. I did not rush to buy Halloween Ends, so I don't have that one. But then we've got Halloween 2, the original sequel. I am missing Halloween 3, which is a bummer because it's one of my favorites. But then we've got Halloween 4, which is also one of my favorites. Jump to 5, and then I am missing Halloween 6, which I do enjoy. I'm also, unfortunately, missing H2O, but I do have Resurrection. I have got Rob Zombie's Halloween, but it's the unrated director's cut, so I kind of can't watch this one. But I feel like as a collector, this is cool to have, but I do really want to get the theatrical cut. Then this right here is Halloween Night, which is actually a fan film. You can watch it for free here on YouTube. This is one of the few fan films that I actually really like. The guys that made it are really cool as well. They sent me some swag, including this, and I think the poster is really well designed. Oh, wait, I lied. There's a couple that I'm actually not missing from Friday, but they I put them up there because, again, it's the Blu-ray thing. It's more of an aesthetic choice. We'll get there when we get there, which is actually right now. Yay. So actually starting at the top, I also have Never Hike Alone. This is a wonderful fan-made film. I highly recommend it. It's the best fan film I've ever seen. I've also been on set a couple of times for Never Hike Alone 2. It's very cool. So love having this one on Blu-ray. Then I also have an eight movie collection of Friday the 13th, but I think a couple of them are missing. Let me just double check. Yeah, so I was sent this one by a very kind subscriber. So I actually do have parts five and six, which is amazing, but the disc of part seven and eight was missing. So I am still missing part eight. And then as you can see, we've got Scream 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I have the original Scream twice because this is the 4K 25th anniversary edition. And so there is a whole brand new like behind the scenes retrospective documentary on this guy. If you can see that, it says a bloody legacy scream 25 years later. So just had to pick this one up when it came out last year. Then as you can see, I've got the five film collection of Final Destination. That one, I actually should swap out with something on the other side and you'll see why in just a moment. I don't know why I had my eight film collection of Saw on the other side when all my other Saw movies are over here. But I've got the first six Saw movies here, which I feel like is kind of all I need. Like the first six movies are the best ones. Everything else that came out after that is kind of like Plus, these are the ones with the really sick covers. Ooh. Ah. Okay, are you fine people ready to see the last shelf in my collection? Follow me right this way. All right, here we go, last shelf. <laughs> now there are some random bits and bobs. Some of these I chose purely because I felt like this was a nice gradient. Just going from the blue to the purple, the pink, the red, which I kind of had to do because if you can see, this is the Blair Witch Project and this is Blair Witch, so they had to be together. But a lot of these actually are some of my all time faves. Some of them kind of ironically, like the Bye Bye Man, but still, this movie kind of has a profound impact on me. I just kind of love it. Also, a lot of these are sleeved, so they look really nice here, including Warm Bodies, one of my faves. A Cure for Wellness, it has a disgusting ending and some unnecessary stuff, but it is one of the most gorgeous movies I've ever seen. What Lies Beneath is such an underrated movie with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. I know you probably can't really see it, but like, you know, close enough. You get the idea. Then up here, we've got all my movies in the Conjuring franchise, so I'm missing quite a few of them. But we've got The Conjuring 2 here, which is another one of those ones from that video rental store that closed. So you can see it's kind of in one of these funky DVD cases, but it is a Blu-ray. We've got all the Annabelle movies actually. So Annabelle, Annabelle Creation, and then Annabelle Comes Home. The only reason why I have Annabelle Comes Home though is because it was in a horror pack. I really, this movie was whatever. And then the original The Conjuring. Moving on up, here is where I moved the Final Destination movie, which is not great because I don't like the look of the Blu-ray on the bottom. I'll probably move it to the top, but that's going to involve moving all of these down. So I'm not going to do that right this second, but I kind of continued the James one universe here. I've got all three of the Insidious movies that I own right here. I have the first two and the fourth, and yes, I'll finish that eventually. But all three of these actually are also from that video rental store. So they're in the same sort of funky like Blu-ray DVD packaging. I've got the first six paranormal activity movies here. So doing a lot of franchises yet again. I've got all four of the Jaws movies here, which I've only seen the first two. It's just never seemed worth it to watch the other ones, but I will because I own them. So eventually I'll get to it. The Birds, my favorite horror movie from the 
the 1960s. This was another one my grandpa showed me. It just felt fitting. Same with Jaws. For some reason, these just felt fitting over here. I think because of all the blue tones, you know, because then I've got the ring again, the ring for a third time, this time on DVD. I literally have it in every possible medium. You already saw I had it on Blu-ray and VHS. It was my favorite horror movie of all time for a very long time, so it, it tracks. It makes sense. Then I have the ring too. Maybe I should move rings over here, but I don't know. I like what I have going over here for now because then we have all the movies of the Child's Play franchise that I own. Unfortunately, I'm missing one of my favorites, Bride of Chucky. I'm also missing Curse of Chucky and the remake, which I really love, but I do have some of my absolute favorites, Child's Play 2 and Seed of Chucky. And then finally, we have all seven of the original Nightmare on Elm Street movies in this little pack. So yeah, nothing crazy, no special editions over here, just a lot of really good franchise stuff. Well, that was fun. Sorry for my technical blunders here and there, but for the actual last things I want to show you, here are my copies of Urban Legend and Scream 3 on VHS. They kind of live permanently on my desk. They're more like decoration. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed that. That was really goofy. It's pretty hard to like move around my room with equipment. But regardless, I hope that you got a good sense of all the stuff that I have in my collection. Let me know your favorite thing that you have in your collection. What am I missing? You know, I know I'm missing a good amount of horror classics. There is still a lot that I want to collect. Namely, I want to collect the entire Evil Dead franchise. I want to fill in the gaps of all the other classic franchises and get the movies that I'm missing. But I find it really fun the way that I do it, where they get sent to me randomly, or I go on the hunt and I scavenge them and I find random sequels here and there. It's really fun. I highly recommend thrifting your movies. Or another thing I do, we have a Black Friday tradition, me and my dad, where we go out on Black Friday and we get all the Black Friday new Blu-ray deals. That is how I acquire most of my collection, or you guys send them to me. You probably noticed some names scrolling on screen. These are my lovely patrons. These people keep this channel funded. They keep me going on days when I am not streaming or when I don't have a video drop. They provide me the time and the means to make this content for the rest of you wonderful people. So if you would also like to support me over there, then the link is down below. I post four to six bonus videos over there every single month. Quite a bit of extra content over there. Come join us. It's a riot. But if that's not for you, all the rest of my social media is linked down below. This is not the content that I typically do. I typically do a lot of video essays where I dig in really deep. My last one was a deep dive on the Evil Dead franchise. I also do deep dives on horror directors. My next one is going to be on Mike Flanagan coming out later this week. But more than anything, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I catch you in the next one. Bye! Bye, my little maggots! Mwah.